Hi there, minions of technology. My name is Tim Lee. Welcome to Legacy Studio. We're playing Uru Ages Beyond Mist right here in Legacy Studio. Now, of course, as you know, we're going to get to all of our comments here in a second. If you don't want to hear all those comments, I'll make sure to put a time code down below. But not just yet. i got a couple other important things to do. First off, our Legacy historians, Tony Allen, Sean Hammond, and William Poniff. Humongous thanks to my amazing supporters that help me continue to be a full-time functioning business. Now, in saying that also... Big thanks to my Dork Historians Early Access here. These guys are all incredible. Would love it if you would consider joining as well. Now, something important to note is that there is a new thing that I'm doing here, and that's called my Patreon account. Now, YouTube takes 30% of everything that you donate to me. That is a humongous poll. I mean, God only asks 10%, okay? And if you got YouTube asking 30%, that's a humongous hit. But Patreon only takes 12%. So... I would love it if you would consider moving your membership if you're already with us on YouTube over to Patreon. That would mean a lot to me. That way most of your donation comes to me and doesn't go 30% over to YouTube. In saying that as well, I'm also going to start offering art classes over on my Patreon under my learner Legacy Learners tier. And that tier and above, you can get art classes that I'm going to be teaching just for you on how to draw caricatures. Right? This is going to be a really, really fun thing. Something I did in my old YouTube channel. Something I'm bringing over here to my new YouTube channel. Uh, not new. I've had this for what? Years? Five years? Three years? Something like that? I've had it for a while. So, in saying that, I would love if you'd consider going to my Patreon. The link is going to be in the description below. Please go there and support and help more of your donation come directly to our pockets. My wife and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It is not easy being a full-time self-employed business. Every penny counts, and I really do mean that. So thank you so very much for your very kind donation. Now, as we get started today, as you know, we're going to get into our comments, and then we have our live stream turned on. And one thing that I want to make sure that we offer is the opportunity for our legacy historians and our Dorka historians to chime in. So you can see here that I actually have a chat box that I'm going to be including with your comments. And as you can see, Tony Allen will say it says he's going to be back in about an hour. So we should look forward to seeing him maybe a little bit later. But anyone who joins during our live streams, um, Dorka historian and above, can actually leave their comments right here, and they will be seen on the video itself. That's going to be really exciting. I hope that you enjoy that fact. If you do, make sure you hit that like button and support my little YouTube channel. Thank you so very much, everyone. We have a lot to do, so let's get down to business, shall we? Let me go ahead and hit a couple magic buttons here, and let's get into our comment reading for the day. So, uh, looking at comments within the last six hours. Now, I am going to read this one because it does mean a lot to me. I did actually respond back to this. Oh, there's someone liked it. I appreciate that. The Joyful Dragon says, When it comes to limiting what games you play due to cussing, couldn't you always just censor it in editing if you want to keep it clean? I'm going to read you the comment that I sent back to him. Two sides to that. Editing time increases, which keep, uh, which I keep as a minimum as possible to focus on other on either producing more or focusing on other tasks. Secondly, it's a goal to direct everyone to clean content. So if someone plays a video game because they watched me play it, I want parents to know their kids are playing clean games as well. Although my videos aren't made for kids, in my 10 plus years on YouTube, I've found that 9 plus year olds definitely watch my content. So it, uh, I make an extra effort to show my testimony and faith by going the extra mile. In saying that, that is why I say this channel is for most ages because I personally don't mind the random cuss here and there. Uh, but when creators use cussing as part of the story, then that spoils the experience for me. I personally have plenty of games that I have found language and other themes in them. If you've ever seen my Steam in the background of my videos, you'd see quite a few, but I won't ever make videos on them because I want each individual to decide for themselves whether it's okay or not to have that in your life. Um, I do not want uh, to be the reason they assume that it is okay because Tim does. So just wanted to know... Oh, he responded back. The joy Joyful Dragon says, Thanks for your time, Tim. A very in-depth reply indeed. Definitely answers the question of that for sure. <laughs> I didn't mean to go that long on it, but yes, absolutely. That is a key part of why this channel is the way that it is. I want to make sure 
that our content here is clean for most ages. And I deeply appreciate the Joyful Dragons question. Uh, in saying that, let's get to some other comments here. In the last eight hours, I'd say Riven is one, the one I enjoyed the most watching you play through. I'd say Riven is the one I enjoyed watching you play through the most, but I've really enjoyed all of these because I was too young to be a part of the community when the game first came out. And by the time I rediscovered them, they were old news. So it's been a lot of fun seeing all the, uh, of these played for the first time and remembering what it was like. Stacy absolutely rocks. I love her comments. And her time that she dedicated to send me an email with a transcripted reading of a whole bunch of stuff that we could be using here in the video. I forget what that transcript was for, but she went the extra mile. That's amazing. So thank you for that email. All right, now we're moving on to our comments from our most recent video. Now, right now, this most recent video that we've recorded is only for our early access historians and above. So if you are uh, a member of either my Patreon or you're a member of my channel here on YouTube, then you get to see this and comment early in. So let's go ahead and read through these comments here. Starting with Nuclear Craft, the funniest fortune I ever saw revealed not was not from a cookie, but from a set of ornate drawers in the elephant-shaped temple of Wat Ban Rai in Thailand. Three other school friends and I went there in 2015 as part of a school trip of sorts, and one of them was a relatively modest, quiet girl from Hong Kong. She pulled open one of the drawers, revealing a fortune that condemned her to a thousand years of plague and bad luck. She didn't quite know how to react. Nice job. Nuclear Craft also says, now we know why Yisha went insane. She read everyone's journals. I got to tell you, when this episode goes live to everyone, it was a very painful episode. I'm warning you ahead of time. I am warning you ahead of time. It is truly bad. Um, Sean Hammond says, at 2035, I can't believe you got the bucket in the right place on the second try. This usually takes me forever to line up. At 5925, a player's character in the Mist, for, uh, Mist games, officially called The Stranger, is different from the player's character in Uru and Mist 5. The stranger's motivations aren't exactly known, but can be implied. He found the mist book in the desert, presumably, then helped Atris because there really wasn't anything else to do. He was trapped in the on the island and couldn't return home until after Riven. During Mist 3 and 4, we know Atris invited him to Tamana both times, so presumably they are just friends then. The player's character in, in Uru is supposed to be you. You. You get that? Uru. You are you. Do you get it? Uh, <laughs> your motivation for being here is that you felt called to the desert. And so you came. As I mentioned during the stream, it's an extremely weak motivation that just serves to get you in the door, but isn't engaging in any way. For Mist 5, I don't know if it was ever officially confirmed, but the community has settled on the player's character being Richard Watson, a DRC member who mentioned multiple times in the journal you're reading. Richard Watson, a.k.a. Rawa, is also one of the main devs and writers at Cyan. Although, given Cyan exists in-world, they are considered to be two separate people. Slight amusing spoiler comment below, but not related to anything important. At 1 hour, 33 minutes, and 44 seconds, if and when you read through the second journal on this desk, pay attention to the dates. Oh, man, I do not want to read that second journal at all. Okay, so that's all the comments that we have for today's video. It's time to actually get into the game. So we're going to get into the game here, and while we get kicked off here, you can see that I have this weird white box here. So let me quickly hit a couple magic buttons, and we're going to make that disappear, hopefully, if, if, if this works according to how I hope it works. Boop. So now we have our chat box there, which should be good, uh, and we should be ready to rock and roll. Finally in the game. Okay, my friends. Ha! Ah, so, I'm looking forward to everyone chiming in. Uh, oh, this is kind of funny. I literally have my screen directly below the camera. So when I look down to read the comments, it looks like I'm looking down to actually read the comments. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's awesome. I might have to stick with that. That's really fun. Okay, so it's time to get into the gameplay. Oh, that's hilarious. I love that. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, swap over our systems here, and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get into this. That is absolutely funny. All right, looking through my pages here to see where I need to go, and 
and I don't see it here. So it's actually probably, unfortunately, one of the other books. Yeah, I don't think it's any of these. Interesting. So even though everyone tell, tells me stick with the hand, I think I think the hand is the one I'm supposed to be doing. I actually do want to head to one specific place. Solve one specific question. And I forget which book it is. Nope, that's not it. So I don't think it's these books. No, I don't think it's these books. Let me double check here. Ah, no? Yes, no. Yes, no. No. It's one of these. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the magic guessing game and see if I I don't think it's this one. I don't think it's that one. Is it this one? I'm going to try this one. I don't think it's this one, but I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. <laughs> We're back at it. All right. Am I in the right? Ooh. Oh, did I get it right on the first try? <gasps> I got it right on the first try. Awesome. Okay. So, now, uh, the awesome Sean gave me the hint that we need to know to do this right. So, what I'm supposed to do, according to him, according to the notes, is that I'm supposed to start in one place and walk across on the shadow left over. Well, there is a shadow there. But... The question is, I want to double check my math here. If I have the lighting set correctly, which I don't know if I do, I'm supposed to start on a specific shadow. So let me do this. I'm going to go into my pictures. Once again, trying to remember. There we go. Okay. So let me go find that specific picture of, ooh, nose itches. Okay, here it is. Directly across from the opposite side of the podiums. So, over there. So let me head over this way. I'm supposed to start right here. And the rule of thumb, technically, is I'm supposed to only walk in the shadow. Oh! Oh! <laughs> That's cool. Dude, trippy. Sweet. Okay. I feel like I'm in tree land again. So do I want to push this button? Because I feel like it's going to close it. I'm right, but is there any... Oh, man, I totally thought there'd be, like, a, a thing on the back of that door. Can I open it, though? I bet you I can't. Ah, oh, trickery. Okay. So, where are we now? We got water. I got my bare feet wet. All right. So, I'm here. There's a lot of trees and wind and jazz here. Okay, I hear a bird, but where would a bird hang out in here? Whoa. Oh, wow, look at how gorgeous that is. That's, that's right off of a painting. Oh, I kind of love that. Don't mind me for looking around. 
All right, switched mice. Now we'll see if this will be a bit smoother for everyone, because, uh, yes, uh, one person's comment was mentioning how uncomfortable. Oh, that is a little bit smoother, isn't it? Okay. I'll stick with this for now. Can you walk off the edge? Should I try? Oh, you totally can. <laughs> I probably should have found the... Uh, I probably should have found the paper in there first. I'm going to go look again. Um, which book was it? Was it this one? I don't think it was that one. Oh, was it? Yes, it was. Okay. All right. Shouldn't have walked off the edge. I know. I knew better. I knew better, and I know I knew better. But I. Where's my diet coke? There it is. <laughs> I know I knew better. Oh well. What do you do? I'm an idiot, and I know it. Okay. I wish I could just jump off the edge here instead of running down this. You know, just, just jump down and. But yes, you do technically die, or at least you have amazing skills to know to hit your book before you fall to your plummet to your doom. So, but I gotta admit, this whole staircase thing was actually really cool, so I'm okay with trying it again. So, let's go across to the other side. Oh, it reset. Oh, that's uncool. Duly noted, I will leave that open. Oh, that's uncool, man. Escape that. There we go. That's uncool. All right. First, second, second, third, and fifth. Second, third, and fifth. All right. Second, third, and fifth. So, second. Uh, second, third, and fifth are the ones that are on. So, first and fourth are the ones that are off. Oh! That is on, so I need to turn it off. Second, third. Okay, and fourth is this one. So second and third. I keep, I see them on, so I think I'm, I think they're already on, but I'm forgetting how it's assigned to light. That should be on the ground. Who's the idiot? This guy. Okay. Second, third, and fifth. All right. Okay, good. Now, let me make my way around over here. Okay, now, careful. Don't step into light. Oh, didn't work that time. Interesting. Maybe I stepped in the light. So, starting right here. Nice and slow. There we go. That's cool. I like that. Okay, now we can leave that open. I'm sorry, I am an idiot, and I know it. I know it. Okay. Oh, it's so pretty. I love that. As an artist, I love that. As a human being, I love it too. I hope I'm not supposed to jump across. Oh, I'm totally supposed to jump across. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to go this way. Whoa. Whoa, that's trippy. No papers? Excuse me, may I see your papers, please? All right, I am just browsing around here. Crazy looking obelisky thingy. Looking for papers. Looking for papers. Looking for the papers. Excuse me, but where are your papers? I do not see no papers. Oh, paper. Now, I am a little concerned about this light. Oh, okay. It doesn't look that dangerous, actually. Okay, cool.
Nice. I'm jumping over the light just in case. Okay. That gave me chill. Did you guys hear that? I, I hope it's in the game. That gave me chills. That... <laughs> that spooked me just a bit there. I freaked out a little. Did you freak out a little? I freaked out a little. Okay. Um... This is interesting. I feel like I should take a picture of this. Um. Whoa. Did you notice that? What on earth is the deal? Is that... Why wouldn't... We got like an EMP issue going on here. Those aren't meant to be touched, apparently. Oh, boy, it's... Oh, how pretty. The lights came up for me. I feel extra special. Okay, it looks like I can go down on both sides. I will go up. Just got real quiet. Really quiet. Are those doors numbered? No. Circle, square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square. Let's hit the button. I knew that bo- Like a bad board game. Okay. So we'll do that again. All right. Now, I recognize some of those shapes, but not all of them. Hang on now. I didn't look behind me. I always look behind me. Now, am I... allowed to touch this? Yeesh. Music got hot trippy. So... Nothing really happens here, as of yet. Hmm. Interesting. Probably one of those scenarios where you're supposed to start somewhere and walk across certain ones. Now, I recognize these shapes. Square, square, circle. Could that be the ball shines down? Square, square, circle. I mean, we got circles and squares all over these doors. No one in our chat room at the moment? I find that when I do these recordings at night, more of our historians show up. So, I... <laughs> I would assume that uh, I probably need to do these recordings if I do them in the evenings for everyone's sake, which uh, usually I would. This is just a 
unusual scenario that I am using while I can. I do not have anything. But I would say Okay, this is definitely a start from somewhere and walk across. But um and I wonder if you have to do it when that's closed. It wouldn't surprise me at all if that was the case. Um, hmm. Like, kind of like a memory game. Betcha that's how this is supposed to play out. Let me look through my pictures one more time, because I know... Was it something I wrote down on my paperwork? And of course I cleaned everything, so now I have no idea where that paperwork is that I had on this. Oh, here it is. Here they are. Hmm. So, from my notes here, I have a feeling this, uh-huh, meant this. Okay. Oh. Oh. Is there the same? How many doors? Eight, nine doors. Interesting. Oh, no, ten doors. Ten doors. Okay. Ooh, excuse me. So ten doors. No buttons. So I just want to test a theory here first. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run back upstairs here. And I'm going to close this. That wasn't there before. Huh? That wasn't there before. It wasn't... It wasn't lit up like that before. I didn't walk across all of that. Oh, interesting. What did I do? Because it sure wasn't that way before. Now, are they... the same? They aren't, but they are. Because... <laughs> Still freaky. There is three combined shapes. So this tree is the same as this tree. And I would assume this one. That one is one? No, it's not the same. That one that one is that one no this is interesting that's not one either but is there something similar yes there is So my theory is that this is a code of some sort, and if we know the number, we know where to walk. Because each one of these is a number. It's not a number, it's a... There are three shapes that equal a certain number. This has to be a walk across. 
Oh, I see what I did. I let light in, and I made it glow. This is like glow in the dark. I wonder if it wears off after a bit. Huh. Okay. See, I find this interesting. Oh, no. No, there is a shape here. Okay. That one, though, isn't a shape to anything else. Very interesting. And there's no... Huh. Huh. So I was right. The doors need that, that base that basically cooks it. <laughs> it cooks the. I wonder if it cooks it for the same amount of time or what. But it yeah, it's it's basically a. Hmm. So, what if I don't know the number? What if I do know the number? What if I do know the number? I assume that's one, two, three, four, five, six. But what if that's the order it's supposed to be done in? What if, what if it's not, what if that is the code to pass this? Look at this. That's not a equal, is that like a clock? 12, 3, 6, 8, 9. Twelve, three, six, eight, nine. We don't know what twelve is, though, do we? Huh. Hmm. Twelve, three, six, eight, nine. But look, is then that another one right there? I would need to see that one square on to know if I was actually looking at that correctly. Hmm. And I didn't get a picture of it square on. That's interesting. I don't remember why that's the case. So what if my job instead is to walk across this according to the code one represents these three shapes so if i can find one that is that shape on the outer perimeter which i think over here i have two options for this Yeah, this one is one. The number two, is there a shape that would represent number two over here? Sure doesn't look like it. If I stood anywhere else, what if I started here? No, that's not it either. Huh.
Hmm. Let me go for a walk around this outer perimeter. That's a one. These are both ones. That one is not a shape that's in conjunction to anything else that I've seen. Neither is that one. Nor that. Nor that. Is there a pattern? Because look at this. Dot, dot. No dot. That's the same one. Oh, wait a minute. What is that? Technically, that one and this one are not the same thing. These two are. But that one's wrong. Either wrong or just different for some purpose. But those two... Hmm. But look at this. Here's that same one as the one on the opposite side. Here's this. That one's fine. And that's where that stops. <sighs> this is almost correct. But it doesn't have... This one's in the number four. If it had a line going this way and a line going this way. Huh. But outside of that, there really isn't anything... There is one, right? Yes. Kind of forgot that I can jump. This is the number six. That one's not connected to anything. That one isn't. Nope. Nope. I don't see anything. Now, I take that back. There is this. No. Not that one. That isn't a shape. So according to my numbers, it's not correct. Technically, this one might be OK as a number 5. Five, one. But I don't understand this one. Because there's nothing that connects it. Interesting. Well, uh, lovely progress at least. But yeah, that didn't quite get me anywhere. Let me go check on something else. I was going to try and do something dangerous. So may as well, if I come here, Hoink! yes, <laughs> okay, so let me just look along here and see if there's anything important.
Ah. Gotcha. Okay. I haven't tried these yet, have I? I'll come back to that in a second. I don't think I'm supposed to go around this corner. So if I fall off the edge here, then I'll... As I figured. William! Hey, William Poneth is here. What's up, William? I will probably record a second episode here shortly because we're wrapping up the first episode. But, stick around, my friend. Did I get anything interesting? Doesn't look like it. Oh my gosh, you are so ugly. Uh, okay. Um, no, I don't want to quit. Oh, maybe I push this button. That would make sense. Alright, what I want to do now is I want to check out this little magic book of mine. And I want to see about these. Really? That's it? <laughs> well, that was short-lived, wasn't it? <laughs> what I thought I was going to take me somewhere, and all it is is a Christmas tree light. <laughs> oh, well. Ah. Oh. Well, my friends, that's going to do it for this episode. Please make sure that you stick around here, though, especially to my folks who are in the chat room because we will be recording another episode here today shortly. Thank you so very much for joining me. Keep it crispy. First Tim 412, as you know, this game continues on and on. Let me go ahead and uh, quickly pull up our Bible verse of the day, which is 2 Corinthians 9, 6. It says, The point of this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And my goal of this channel is to sow bountifully, to make a difference in the world, because the world is messed up as it stands. So if we can make a difference here on this YouTube channel in the smallest way, we can take it all the way. And that is my goal. We sow bountifully. All right, my friends. More coming your way here on Legacy Studio. Keep it tuned in. We're getting interesting with Christmas tree lights. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in a little bit in our next episode. Thank you so much for watching, my friends.